is how we are going to calculate how far into the wall you need to place your shower valve. So first things first, you need to get the actual depth of your shower valve, which is going to be from the face of the plastic guard, um, at least for Moen, the face of the plastic guard to the back. So if you place your shower valve on the ground, and then use a tape measure to measure from the ground to the face of that plastic guard. Remember, it's not the face of these two pieces that jut out. It's the face of this plastic guard right there. So for me, it's about three and a quarter. So I'm going to use a tape measure. I'm going to stick my tape measure on the ground, press it up nice and flush to the face of that guard. And then I'm going to read the distance there. And it looks like I'm sitting at about three, I'm going to call it three and a quarter inch. Yours may be different, but you're going to need that depth. And then there's going to be an, another couple of measurements we're going to need to calculate this. Yours might be slightly different, but um, you can pick and choose. So you're going to need the tile thickness. If you haven't bought your tile already, um, I would hold off on installing the valve until you know your tile thickness. The backer board thickness, the thickness of a float if you're doing a float, the waterproofing membrane if you're doing a waterproofing membrane, and then thin set. You could have two layers if you're doing a waterproofing membrane. So once you have all those, mine is three-eighths of an inch for my tile. I'm doing half-inch backer board. I am planning on doing a float, and I'm going to do a quarter-inch float, but then when you account for the thickness of the lath, um, I'm going to add an eighth of an inch onto that, so one-fourth plus one-eighth and that will equal three eighths my waterproofing membrane i'm just going to average and say about a sixteenth of an inch and then two layers of thin set the first one is going to be to adhere that waterproofing membrane that one i feel pretty safe in saying it's about a sixteenth of an inch and then your second layer will vary depending on how big your tile is, how much thin set you need under it, the thickness of your notched trowel. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that's going to be an eighth of an inch. And remember, you get about a quarter of an inch um, in a safety zone for this, uh, for the depth that this shower valve needs to sit. So it doesn't need to be exactly down to the 16th of an inch but if you can get as close as you can then you're going to be in a much better position so those two together equal three sixteenths so now we need our wall thickness which is all of this stuff added up so wall thickness can be tile thickness backboard thickness thickness of float waterproof membrane and thin set so let's go ahead and plug those numbers in so we've got three eighths, and I think I'm just going to do them all in sixteenths. So let's go six sixteenths for my tile thickness, which is just three eighths converted into sixteenths, six sixteenths. Backer board thickness one half, which is eight sixteenths. Then we've got our thickness of our float, which we calculated to be. 3 eighths, so again, 6 sixteenths. Our waterproofing membrane, 1 sixteenth. And then our thin set, our two layers, which we calculated to be 3 sixteenths. We will add that in. So now let's add them all up. We've got 6 sixteenths plus 8 sixteenths. That is going to be 14 sixteenths. Then we have, we'll go ahead and add the 1, that's 15 sixteenths. We'll add the 3, so that's 1 inch and 
two sixteenths, and then we'll add the six, so that's one inch and eight sixteenths, so that equals one eight sixteenths equals one and one half inch. So that's the number that we want here. One and one half inch. And let's just double check our math real quick. 12, 13, 16, plus 8. Yep, one and a half inch. So our wall thickness equals one and a half inch. And that is going to be subtracted down here. So we're going to take our shower valve depth, which is this first measurement we took, and that was three and a quarter. So let's go shower valve depth equals three and one quarter inch. Our wall thickness, which we just calculated here, was one and one half inch. So one and one half. So now we need to subtract those. So three and a quarter minus one and a half. So again, we can convert that to fourths to make it a little easier. So one or three and a quarter minus one and two fourths. That's going to be uh, one. Let's see. So three minus one, two, one quarter minus two fourths is going to be negative three fourths so that means we are at one and three quarters and again just three and a quarter minus one and a half all right so this number is the depth this is where we're at here the depth you need to set your backer which is this piece of wood your backer in from the face of the studs. So face of the studs being right here, and this being our backer, right? So that is one and three quarter inch. So if you measure from the face of your stud and you measure in one and three quarter of an inch, and then you place the face of this backer at one and three quarter of an inch. Then when you place your shower valve onto this backer, that face frame will stick out from, it'll stick out in front of the face of the studs this thickness. So it should be perfectly in line with your finished wall. You may be using something like a like Schluter Curdy board where you're not going to be having a waterproofing membrane over and you're only going to have to take into account that back of board thickness. You may not be doing a float at all. You may only have one thin set layer. So again, you can adapt this formula by taking out things that you don't need from the calculation of the wall thickness. So if you're not doing a float, you're gonna take that, that variable out. Um, if you're only doing one layer of thin set, you know, you'll plug in the correct number. You can change your numbers however you want here, plug them into this wall thickness formula. Your shower valve depth may also be different. It may be bigger or smaller. So you can just use this general formula and then plug in whatever you need and then get this number. And that's going to be how deep you put in that backer board. And then you're going to attach that valve to the backer board. Always double check you didn't make any mistakes by measuring um, from that backer board or from the face of the studs to the face frame of your um, shower valve plate or your uh, little plastic guard. 
Um, so yeah, you have this calculation to use at your disposal. And then just go ahead and I will be showing you the next steps once you do this calculation. All right, so I just went ahead and installed this valve on that backing that we put up. Um, I basically found the center of the shower and I made a, a line there, transferred that up to here so that I could have this valve and the shower head um, in the center of the shower. Um, and then I just made a plumb line that I lined up the top and the bottom of the valve with. Uh, then I just secured it with three screws, one, two, and then three there. And then I made sure that it wasn't too lopsided left or right. Um, I also attached these uh, intakes, the, or the supply lines, the cold and hot, before I put it on. Um, just because it's kind of tight over here and it would have been hard to get this fitting, this elbow in here um, once it was on. And then over here, it was just easier to do that that way. And then I also, I'm actually supplying this with three quarter inch. So this is actually a reducing elbow. So it's coming in three quarters, reducing down to a half where it then goes into the valve. And that's because I have two valves going in here. There's gonna be three heads. If I was running all of this off of half inch pecs, uh, you'd lose a lot of pressure if you opened up more than one fixture. So I actually tapped into the main line down there and then I ran three quarter inch up all the way here and I'll be running three quarter inch all the way up to the valve where I'll then change the half inch. Um, but if you just have one fixture, half inch should be fine. But if you notice that you get a lot of drop in pressure, if somebody turns on the sink or something and you have the ability to run three quarter inch, I would suggest doing that. So yeah, once this is done, now I'm just going to connect. I'm gonna put my other valve over here. That will be for the rain head. And then I'm gonna just attach these two lines to both valves. And then I'm gonna run the other pecs up to the shower head up there. And then also one up there for the rain head. Um, and then that will be that. So yeah, it's just kind of plug and chug at this point. You just wanna make sure that you get this all the way over to there and then to the other valve if you have one.